I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my life living in Latin America. I'm still here in Belize, and today we're going to take you on a walking tour of Cape Colca. We're heading out by ferry from Belize City. We're going to go walk uh, and spend some time out on the quay while I'm here working in Belize. This is my only free day, so I wanted to make sure I got a little bit of time actually sightseeing and doing some interesting, fun things for you guys. So we're going to go do that today, and uh, yeah, we're just going to have some fun. I actually got a chance to relax out on the key. Really great time. So I'm glad I get to take you guys along for a little walk and show you what it's like here for the first time in the tourist areas. We've shown Belize previously, but it's always been Belize City uh, where I was working. Now we're going to get to actually go out to the Keys and show you what touristy Belize can look like. So you can come along with me on the ferry ride over to the Key right after that bump. We are going to start our journey at the uh, at the terminal right here in Belize City. So if you are going to be heading out to Key Culker, chances are this is where you're going to be disembarking from. Uh, this is right in the middle of the city. Now there are flights out to Key Culker, but very few people are going to fly out there. Taking the ferry is certainly the way to go. It is about an hour long. So we're just going to take you through the terminal right there on the right. Yeah, I, I show it just a little bit. That's where you buy tickets, just in case you're wondering. Plenty of food on the left, a few places to buy drinks, hats, t-shirts, sunscreen, that kind of stuff right here. Uh, probably not the best place to go shopping here in the terminal, but if you have something you need, this is where you get it. Here you can see gate one to San Pedro and gate two to Key Culker. Uh, that is San Pedro from the song by Madonna, uh, La Isla Bonita. Uh, now that is about 30 minutes farther than Key Culker, and it is much, much larger. San Pedro is the famous island with the, the giant population, uh, but Key Culker is closer and uh, just, just a lot easier to do if you live in Belize City. Here we have a little shot of the port. Beautiful, beautiful waterfront there with Caribbean colors. Totally, you can tell immediately. This is such a different style. I, I know, we've done Belize videos before, so you guys have seen a bit, my regular audience, but uh, if you're new or have not seen those, uh, the you know, this is the Caribbean. So everything here is so different than what we show in Nicaragua on the Pacific waterfront. It is a totally different body of water. Now, this was an exceptionally calm day, uh, but here you have very minor tides in general. You have much calmer water in general. It's the Caribbean, first of all, so that makes it a lot calmer than the Pacific. Uh, but also, uh, there is the giant reef here in Belize, which blocks a ton of incoming waves. That is actually, I believe, a barge heading out uh, to Key Culker. They deliver all the goods uh, for the Keys in that way. So that is, uh, that's a common sight out here. Uh, most everything comes from Belize City. The Keys have pretty small populations, so they don't have a lot of support on their own. We had the absolute perfect day for this trip. I mean, first of all, look at that sky. This is the Caribbean. So bright sun, I know you kind of think, oh, bright sun in the Caribbean, that's the thing to do. No, you want cloud cover. We don't have to have sunscreen on. We're not burning. This was so refreshing. Like this was absolutely fantastic. And then while we're on the boat, I'm just going to comment that. So first of all, there was no wind. So this is flat. Even my wife who gets seasick anywhere would have been able to handle this boat on this particular day. Um, she would not have wanted to take the risk, but she could have done it. And uh, we're coming up on Key Calker. Just a little bit ago, there was another key on the right that is a newly being developed key. Uh, but so many uh, Americans that I've overheard speaking talk about how hot it is here in Belize. And coming from Nicaragua, I'm so shocked that people find this hot. Normally, Belize does get hot. I'm not saying it doesn't. But on the days that I've been here, it's actually chilly. Um, a lot of times we're out in, in pants and, you know, long pants and, uh, you know, we're dressed up for work and it's not even slightly warm. Uh, in my hotel where I'm recording the audio here, um, I actually have not had the air conditioning on. I have not had a fan on. I do not have a window open. And if anything, it's slightly chilly, even, uh, you know, it's a bit warmer than the outside. And it's just, it is not warm <laughs> this week. And, and without the sun beating down, it's really nice. So here we are coming into Key Culker. This is the landing point, which is kind of, a, I think, about midway along the island. We're going to walk the north side of the island only. 
but we're going to show you quite a bit. I'm I'm glad we got to do this walk and this this ferry ride. Like this just worked out perfect. Um, I had some people with me, and and they live here, and and they were kind of like, ah, eh, you know, we'll go for Scott. And then they were like, this was a perfect day. Like it just this was fantastic. We had a really nice relaxing time and it was nice to get away from the office and do something different as well because I'd been here in Belize previously and did not get a chance to do anything uh, outside of work. So this was this was quite nice. So here we are disembarking, just very easy. I wanted to show all this. So if anyone is interested in heading out to the Keys, you can see how easy it is and exactly what to do. Um, super casual, nothing to worry about. And uh, here we are going through. They have this funny choke point here with this fence just to, to make sure people don't rush onto the island, I guess. I don't know. And uh, that little sports bar over there, we're going to visit that uh, just before we leave. So we're going to walk uh, up on kind of the main road or front street. Um, and then we're going to try to walk back um, as much as we can along the beach, which is not too much. Mostly we'll come back on front street as well. So we're not going to walk every bit of the island, but we're going to give you a really good feel for it. So here we're just heading from the beach up to front street. I don't know why they have a stop sign. There's no cars. There's no traffic. Really could probably just skip those. Uh, obviously, this is a completely touristy beach. This slightly on a, on a very small scale is kind of like Isla Mujeres, which uh, we went to um, earlier this year, about eight months ago, uh, and I did some, some videos from there. There's a, a certain shared vibe uh, that is also uh, a Caribbean island, um, also has a uh, tourist city nearby that you launch there from a ferry. So there's a lot of shared uh, kind of kind of situation. Isla Mujeres is much larger, uh, much more developed, um, more infrastructure and and much closer to a much larger city. Belize City is absolutely tiny, uh, and and this is an hour away. Whereas Cancun to Isla Mujeres, I think, is about thirty minutes, and Cancun is a major city, uh, and and Isla Mujeres is a much larger island with a lot more population on it. So they they're different in those ways, but uh, it is it is definitely similar in feel uh, in certain ways. But basically, every single thing is a tourist business. There's really nothing else. Um, but sometimes that's what you want, right? You're heading out uh, to a Caribbean island. Do you really want to see a whole bunch of people living there? Eh, maybe not. Um, there's tons of restaurants. And this is actually really encouraging because in Belize City, there's practically nothing, even though that's the biggest population center in the country. There just isn't that much to do. But here on, on the Key, uh, there is quite a lot of food in reality, a lot of bars, of course, uh, tours and rental places and little shops and uh, uh, street food and <laughs> dogs sleeping everywhere. Um, of course, street dogs are a different thing here because there's really no cars, so street dogs fare pretty well. There's some condos and, of course, there is real estate shops cheek by jowl just everywhere. Uh, that's always unpleasant, but uh, in general, uh, you've just got a lot of little places that you can stop in, a lot of places to buy souvenirs and everything. So it's all the all the standard touristy stuff, which you can see here. But it was relatively uh, very chill, relatively quiet. Um, I have to do these voiceovers for this, uh, partially because I was not alone, so it's very hard to do a walking commentary as I go, but also because there's, there is a bit of music playing from the bars, and uh, that'll, that'll flag us for our... Uh, uh, copyright. And so I, it just places like this force uh, me to do voiceover. Unfortunately, you can also see there's a bit of wind. So not, uh, not ideal for, for speaking anyway, plus all the traffic going by, which is not a lot, but um, we're actually with these people walking pretty much, right? They're very close. So it'd be kind of like I was talking to them as we as we went. So it's kind of good to do a voiceover. But this was a very nice walk. Um, one of the things I like here on the key is this is like uh, kind of a, a, a light dirt with a lot of sand. So it's very soft, very flat, uh, even though it's just dirt everywhere. It, it's quite comfortable for walking quite some distance. It's it's relatively even. You don't need to have sidewalks. Uh, it's just, it, it's quite nice. And everything's very flat. Now, I heard that um, originally Key Calker was a single island. And then a number of years ago, like more than 40 years ago, uh, maybe much more, I don't know, a hurricane came through and split the two islands. Uh, and so, or split the island in two, I should say. So now it's two islands. 
So we're on the South Island, which is the old one that, that originally was where all the people were. And then the North Island uh, at the time of the split was actually essentially uninhabited, which is amazing to think that that could be the case, uh, that, that, that that half of a paradise island was just, eh, no one bothered to live there. Seems pretty crazy. Uh, today, it is populated and you have to get there by another boat. Uh, so you walk all the way to the north end of the South Island, which we're doing right now. And then you come to a place known as the Split. There's a bar that's called the Split to takes advantage of the location. Uh, and then there's a tiny little boat that takes you over a very swimmable distance uh, over to the other island. And then you can venture off there. And uh, we did not do that, uh, but very easy to get to. And there's a lot of little things over there as well. There's, if you look at a map, it's very similar uh, as to how much is over there. So you can see there's lots of people walking the island. Um, it's it's a little bit crowded, but, you know, it's a tourist island. You need it to be, uh, to be able to do things. But this was just such a great day for a walk. A lot of days you go out here. So as a warning, Belize can be very, very warm and very sunny. So on a hot day, this is a little bit rough. You will actually want to stop with, at one of these ice cream shops or get a drink and keep yourself cool. You'll be very hot and sweaty and you'll want sunscreen. But we just got such a perfect day that there was no way we were going to sweat. There was just enough breeze that you always had fresh air blowing. The air temperature was fantastic. The the shade, just this, we, we could not believe how perfect the weather was the the whole time so very happy with with all of that you can really see the caribbean construction on all the buildings both here and in belize city a lot of wood construction a lot of things on stilts um, a lot of little dogs. I did notice that the street dogs here on the quay are very small. I'm used to much larger street dogs uh, in, in most places that I go, like very different breeds. Here's the quay Culker sign. So we're a little bit on the north side. And there's a big playground there, a little bit of public space. It's a very cute sign. They did a good job with that. And we'll continue on the walk. There you can see, I believe those are condos over there on the left. And of course, you can also go uh, snorkeling and scuba diving uh, here on the Keys. And that's a popular thing to do in Belize. Uh, it's definitely one of the world's snorkel uh, uh, destinations. Uh, so if that's something that you're looking to do, this could be a perfect place uh, for you to come vacation. And uh, I believe a lot of people come. I am not a scuba diver, so take anything on that with a grain of uh, salt. But... I believe a number of people come to get their scuba certifications uh, in Belize. That is what I've been led to believe, uh, but uh, verify that before you decide to come to Belize for that purpose. Uh, but I do believe that this is a good place to do that. Uh, so you'll find those people as well. I'm actually recording this audio at one o'clock in the morning in the hotel. So I'm trying to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more quiet, a little ASMR on the, on this one. So I apologize if it's uh, not the, not the best audio. I don't have a lot of equipment either. It's tough doing these videos when we're out on the road for a long period of time, especially when I have very little time to prepare. You can see the sign for the split there at the end of the street. We'll be working our way down there. And those are condos right there on the left. And there are several for sale. I think they're all for sale, actually. Um, it's odd. I find that this kind of island seems like people would be snatching up everything that they can. And I know real estate in Belize is going just absolutely crazy. And yet on this island, I did not get the feeling that real estate was doing great. It, I don't know. Very much not what I was expecting, um, given the unbelievable number of people moving to Belize and, and the number of expats that are everywhere. Uh, I would have expected to see a lot more expat construction here on uh, on this area. Uh, so this is the split or it is the uh, the business complex known as the split that leads up to the split. Uh, the split being the the cut between the two islands where the water comes through in the channel. And uh, this is where we're going to be heading uh, to have a few drinks. And all these businesses, uh, my understanding is that they're all owned by the same person uh, who owns the bar in front of us, which is where we're headed. Uh, and it was quite nice. Um, no no reason not to go there. Uh, or there, there was a lot of bars that looked pretty nice uh, here. But this is a pretty great location. 
because uh, you have the water all the way around. So there's a bit to do inside this this little point at the at the north end. I think that the this business kind of got lucky actually that the hurricane came through because it, it was there before. Um, that says lazy lizard on the right. I'm not sure why. And uh, before the hurricane came through and and split the two islands, this was a bar at kind of the north end of the populated zone and um, in in sort of the middle of the island. So it was not a special place at all. And then because its waterfront was wiped out, uh, it poured in, it did dredging and, and built all this that we're standing in right here. This is all artificial so that they could put in their, their tables and stuff. So they kind of ended up in the perfect spot to have the north end of this island with three sides on the water. And then there's the there's the North Island over there that you can see. Um, we can, that's where the boat goes to. That is not the boat. as just a guy person going through the channel. But you can see on the left of the island, there's a little spot where you can land. That is uh, where the, the little boat going between the islands uh, comes from and goes to. This is a Panty Ripper. This is the uh, local drink here in Belize. And we're here on Key Kulker on the south side by the split. That is the North Island over there. And uh, that is good. We're just enjoying a calm day out here. Probably can't use any of the sound in this because of the music in the background. <laughs> We had just the most beautiful day. So it was really nice to be able to sit out on these chairs and just sit on the Caribbean, have some rum drinks and chill. I do not get to do this often, even living in Nicaragua like I do. I, I really don't get to go out to the beach very often, which I know all of my audience, whenever you guys are in town, everyone's like, we're just going to go to the beach and run into Scott. And that so does not happen. I am out there so rarely. Uh, and there just isn't time. I don't... I don't get to go hang out. Um, so we actually, I got a fish and chips and and had a couple of those, those Panty Ripper uh, drinks, which are quite good. Those are, for those who are wondering, it is uh, coconut rum, uh, pineapple juice, and grenadine. They are quite good and they are uh, the local uh, the local specialty here in Belize, you know, it's it, every, every bar that I've noticed, uh, serves them. It's just a standard, of course, coconut and pineapple being, uh, major flavors uh, of the area. We are heading back at this point. We're walking along the front road and we'll cut along the beach, uh, further on. And, uh, we're also going to have, um, some beautiful sunset views. I managed to get some amazing footage of the sunset on this particular night. Uh, so this is uh, just our walk back. You can kind of see all the same places that we saw on the way here, uh, but from the other other side, which actually does show you quite a bit different. So um, I actually had not noticed that place on the right glowing pink as we walked by. The Oh, that's the tropical cake wave. Yeah, it actually looked interesting. And you can see there's a lot of dogs, but I think they may belong to people and just hang out on the street because it's, it's decently safe out there. Although you can see them running from the golf carts. There are a lot of golf carts, but no cars. I didn't see any cars driving out there, which is nice. I love it when these islands do the, the no car zones. It's very pleasant to, you know, cars make so much noise and they make the roads so much faster. And it's, it's, I wish that our beach in Nicaragua would go to just golf carts or something like that. It's, it really is a nicer place to be day to day when it's, when it's quiet and, and safe. Like you really don't worry about walking in the streets then, but when you have cars and traffic, it's parking so much more of an issue. Just it, it's harder. Uh, so lots of little hotels along here. Um, and importantly, the last ferry goes at about five 15. Of course that could change. That was just on the day that we were here. Um, and much like Ometepe in Nicaragua, if you miss that ferry, you're staying on the island and uh, there's not a ton of, of things to do. Like a lot of stuff shuts down with the last ferry because there aren't that many tourists on there. So be aware, you really need to make that ferry or have hotel reservations and, and know that you're going to be able to spend the night or you could be very sorry on Key Kulker as it is not a big place and in the middle of the night in the dark um, there's going to be limited opportunities to walk around and do things so I think you'd be you'd be pretty sad if you were not able to get a hotel or something 
Um, and a lot of these places are, you know, potentially seasonal. Um, and, uh, you know, some are decent sized hotels, but, but none are big. And I didn't see any chains, which is really nice. I like that a lot that uh, it in Belize in general, there are extremely few chains and especially not foreign chains. Um, and that's something that I think people would expect being an English speaking country, part of the Commonwealth. They have a lot of connection to the UK for sure, but also the US and Canada. And that would naturally make you think that you would see McDonald's and Burger King and maybe not a ton, but but some amount of foreign influence in that way. And Belize has very, very consistently managed to avoid having any of those things, not in Belize City, not out in the Keys, um, not when you drive around the country, um, to the best of my knowledge, and I have not looked this up, but they, I was told that there's basically zero American restaurants. Like the, the whole idea of having a chain just does not exist. Um, and, and the Belizeans do not have chains, uh, really, that we've seen. So it's, um, it's really nice uh, in that way that everything's local restaurants and stuff. Now, partially that's because just the overall size and population of Belize is so astronomically small. It's so hard to understand how small Belize actually is. It's, it's confusing uh, with how, how small it is. In, in so many ways. Uh, and so that makes it much easier to keep the chains out because the potential market for them to come in, the you know, is not nearly as much. But, but Belize has such dramatic tourism that uh, it does seem like there would be some reasonable market for American uh, businesses to be there. Plus, you know, Belizeans uh, must have some interest as well. So uh, there has to be some concerted effort to keep them out, I'm sure. And it's working really well. Uh, so so that part's really cool. Everywhere you go, you're going to be looking at local food and, and, and often, you know, very small family owned businesses. And so that's, uh, that's something I like a lot about Belize. Of course, in most of Central America, you're gonna have those those kinds of things. Uh, but it's mixed in with with chains and, and big business owned uh, things. Um, now, the one thing I did see a ton of, and you'll, you can see it right here in the video, everywhere you go is land shark and land shark just that that is the the Jimmy Buffett's beer for his Margaritaville uh chain of of weird pretend Disney fied uh uh bars for people who are in paradise but want to go to a chain place it's kind of like the TGI Fridays of paradise it's just it's a sad situation um now Margaritaville, as far as I know, it does not have a presence in in Belize. And someone's going to be like, no, 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 it's over in the other island, and then I'll be sad. But um, I've seen nothing like that. But the land shark beer from there is everywhere in Belize. Cannot believe how much of that we saw. So that is just very surprising. I didn't know. I've noticed some in Belize City, um, but but out in the Keys, it is a it, it, it must be every other bar at least has that. And I saw so many tourists drinking that, which makes me sad because Belize has very good beer of its own, you know, very local beer. And, uh, you know, if you want to get something that's a very high quality beer from somewhere, okay. And if you want to get, uh, you know, local, that's generally the best thing to do. Um, but getting a weird tourist chain Beer is a really, really strange thing to do, I think, right? Because it's it's literally tourist beer. Um, <laughs> it's not it's not a beer that gets sold places where people who buy beer. Um, now it's it's made by uh, my understanding is it's actually made by Anheuser Busch. Um, so it's a you know it's at least made by a real beer company. But it, it's just, it's, I, I can't even, right? The idea that someone would go get tourist beer is just beyond me. I don't understand the mentality at all. Uh, it's, this is my beer. And it's one purpose is to mark me as being a tourist and not selecting the local beer and not having any preference of beer myself. It's just 
I don't know. I, I find it absolutely appalling. So we're here. Uh, we were waiting for the ferry, so we stopped by uh, this little bar and uh, just grabbed a drink. Hey, Belize. <laughs> While we were waiting, and uh, after after one drink, our, our ferry was there, so it was time to head back. There was a really packed ferry on the way there, but on the way um, on the way back, there were very few people on it. I was really surprised. Now, this couple definitely had quite a few drinks at the sports bar before they got in their golf cart. I saw them driving out, and I was a little bit worried about it. So there's the common drinks there. There's the one on the bottom uh, that we I had quite a few of. You can see it really is on the signs. All right, time to head over to that ferry. And they're going to turn around and come through the parking lot, and we kind of had to dodge them a little bit. Yep. <laughs> okay, now I accidentally turned off stabilization on the camera. So for the rest of this video, I want you to be amazed by just how stable and leveled the videos are, considering I'm doing it completely by hand and mostly without knowing my leveling and stabilization was off. This is how steady, and okay, it's not perfectly level at the, at the moment, but in general, how steady and level I actually am when filming. I do that to improve the leveling for all of you. Now this ferry ride back, we got the most gorgeous sunset. The colors were amazing and the video doesn't really do it justice. Like it was so good standing there with this bloom of grenadine orange juice sky just pouring over the buildings there in, in Key Culker. It was, it was magical. Everyone just stood there staring at the sunset uh, the whole the whole ride back. So it is so gorgeous that I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to put on some music. And uh, when the sunset's done and the last scenes of riding on the ferry are done, I'll pop back in uh, to give you the outro. But this is this deserves just some music to enjoy. So thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll see you after the sunset.
I hope you guys enjoyed going for a walk out on Key Kalka. That was it was a really fun day. We only had a little bit of time out there, a few hours uh, at the end of the work day, but it was very cool getting to go out and relax for a little bit and do something different. I really never get a chance to go out to Caribbean islands. Uh, we, I mean, we've done it a little bit this year, but it's it's pretty rare, uh, even living down here in Central America quite often. Uh, we end up on the Pacific, but not on the Caribbean. So I was very glad to get to go out here and having been to Belize before and getting to do nothing touristy, it was really nice to get to do it this time. So I really appreciated that time. Sorry, I have to do my intros in the hotel. I have very limited time out here because I'm working a lot while we're here. So just getting the, the show filmed is very difficult. But thanks so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe at the end of this video. If you could watch another or even just let it play in the background, boy, does that make a big difference to promoting the show. We really appreciate it when you guys do that. The more you're able to, and the, just clicking it from the show helps as well, like hitting the ones at the end or the ones that it recommends. That helps because it's like, oh, this show is driving you to more. I know, crazy how the algorithm works. And uh, if you'd like to help support the show, we'll put a link up. It's buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It's like Patreon comes directly to me. You also can join our membership. We just hit 20 people in the members, which is incredible. Like, I mean, I know that sounds like not a lot, but that is a huge number for a show like this. So really thankful to all of our members who commit to a monthly uh, uh, support number. That's really fantastic as well. So just thank you to everyone. We really appreciate all of you and the support and the community. And if you have any questions, comments, anything, get down there uh, in those. Just scroll down and ask your questions. Say hello. Uh, send in a video uh, question if you like. We got one uh, that was sent in by Brent just recently. We're going to get that up on the show really soon. Maybe as early as tomorrow and uh so i thank everyone again and i will see all of you tomorrow